Welcome back to part two of our InDesign introduction. I'm going to be showing you guys a little more about paragraph styles, character styles, adding drop caps, and also working with gradients and color. So I'm going to start out by creating a character style. So let's pretend this is my headline. I'm going to go ahead and change that. I'm going to change the font to Century Gothic. I'm going to make it caps and let's also make it a blue. Okay, so I could either use a paragraph style or a character style. The difference is that a paragraph style will affect the entire paragraph. And because this is on its own line, it would be considered an, a separate paragraph. A character style only affects the specific characters. So I'm going to go ahead and just go with a character style for this. Call it blue header and hit OK. So let's say I also want this to be a header. I'm just going to go ahead and select that text and select that character style. I'll go ahead and do the same thing here. So now you can see that those three headlines have the blue header character style applied to them. The cool part about working with character styles and paragraph styles is that if you make a change to the style, then it will affect everything that has it applied to it. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on that. I'm going to hit preview so I can actually see the changes. And let's go ahead and change that character color. So we just made it a pink and you can see that they were all affected. I can go to general, call that pink header now, and hit OK, and it changes it throughout my document. So I could have done that same thing with the paragraph style. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how that works. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and change this to a magneto font. I'm going to go to paragraph styles. and hit new. I'm going to go ahead and rename that. Just name it after the font, Magneto. And I also want to change that color. So now I have a paragraph style and a character style. So let me show you the difference. When I apply a character style, only that selection is affected. But with that same selection, if I apply that paragraph style, the entire paragraph is affected. Okay, so that's the difference between those two. Paragraph styles are extremely handy when you're working with large blocks of text because you'll probably want to create something called body copy. So maybe I want everything in my document to be Arial and maybe I want everything to be size 11. So I'm going to go to my paragraph styles, create body copy, and I can apply that to everything in my document. Again those character styles are overriding that paragraph style. So the convenient part about that is if I want to go back and change my body copy later on, I can just double click on that. And I can go to my basic character formats. And if I decide I want all of my copy in this document to be bigger, I can change all of it at once. If I decide I might want more letting, more spacing in between those lines, I can increase that or decrease it if I find that I need more room. So again, they're a great way to apply formatting to large amounts of text. So let's say I want to put a drop caps in here. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit. I'm going to select... So with that letter selected, I'm going to come over here to paragraph. And right up here you'll see a little drop down. Click on that. And choose drop caps and nested styles. So over here you can affect you can change how many lines are affected. So if I want it just to go on one line, as it is now, or maybe I want it to go on two. So it's not showing me that update, that's because I don't have preview selected. So now you can actually see the difference there. One line, two lines, you can make it three. It's all up to you. And you can also choose how many characters are affected. So if you want that entire word 
to be a job caps, you have that option. So I want to go ahead and format this A. I'm going to go to character style. And you can see if I wanted to match my header, I can select the pink header style and it'll apply that to that letter. But I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. I'll just call it drop caps. I'm going to come over here to my bas basic character formats. And I'll just go with brush script for now. Let's do a different color. I'll go ahead and make this one light blue. Hit OK. And you can see how that changed. So it looks like it's going right up against the Q, and I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the two. And then I'm going to adjust the kerning, the spacing in between these two characters. I can do that by coming right up here and just increasing that. So there I have an easy drop caps. So now I want to do something different with this image. I'm going to go ahead and bring down these text boxes. And I want to make this image a little bit larger. I'm double clicking to actually access the image within the frame. I'm just going to stretch it out to its full size. Alright, and that'll work for now. What I'm going to do is I want to apply a gradient to this. So I'm actually going to remove that wrap that I had applied. If you come over here, you'll see the gradient tools. You'll see one for a regular tool to add a solid fill, and then you'll see another to feather the edges. So that's what I want to do, is I just want to go ahead and feather this down. So all I had to do was click and drag down, and you can see it's feathering that, Im feathering that image. And you can use rulers just like you do in Photoshop or Illustrator. You just click and drag them out, and then to show or hide them, you can do Command and Colon. So with this, it did not affect the image. It was the frame that it affected. So you can see, even if I move this around, that feathering is still going to look the same. If I copy this image and paste it, you'll see it doesn't have the gradient app applied to it. There are also other things you can do with these image frames. If I wanted to, I can add a stroke to this. You can increase the stroke right up here. This probably looks pretty familiar from Photoshop and Illustrator. And this image already has, this box already has a image as its fill, but if you wanted to, you can also add one right up here. You also have additional stroke options if you come over here. Again, this probably looks pretty familiar. And you can also alter the corners. You can do that by coming right up here. So if I want rounded corners, I can just choose rounded. And then I can choose how extreme I want them to be. You can also do that, again, by alt-clicking. And you can adjust each of these individually if you wanted to. So one more thing really quick is color. So I'm going to come over here to my swatches. And you'll see this little drop down here. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to choose New Color Swatch. So here you have the option to switch between Process and Spot Color. You can also choose to give it a new name if you'd like. And you can also change the color mode. So you can choose CMYK, RGB. If you're working with different Pantone swatches, you have that option here as well. And you can see here, this little icon, that means it's CMYK. This means it's a process color. So just to show you the difference, I'm going to go ahead and create a spot color. That's RGB. I'll hit OK. And you can see here, that represents RGB, and this means it's a spot color. So I actually want to go ahead and delete this swatch. I don't want to keep any RGB colors in my document. So I just clicked on the trash can right over here. 
But you can see right now, that's still set as my fill. So if I clicked on New, new Swatch, it's going to add it back in. If I had this selected, and I click New Swatch, it's going to create a copy of it. Again, I'm going to go ahead and create, delete those. So I have a new one selected now, and I want to go ahead and create a different color. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this like lavenderish color. I hit OK, and again, you can see it doesn't automatically get added. Once you have that color and you want to create it, you want to add it as a swatch, you click here, and that's going to add it for you. So that's it for our InDesign demonstration. I hope you guys found it useful. Again, these are just the basics to get you started. The best way to really get familiar with the program is to get in there and keep practicing. Good luck!